In May 1941, the Commonwealth force in Crete, comprising mainly New Zealanders, Australians and British, was organised in five separate defence areas along the north coast. Around the three airfields at Heraklion, Rethymnon and Malame, and at Suda Bay and the port of Hania. The Germans launched their attack on the 20th of May with airborne troops, parachuting in and landing in gliders. To their surprise, they met with a stiff resistance, not just from the Allied forces, but the Cretans themselves, who, undefended by their own army away in Albania and ill-equipped, fought against the invaders with anything that came to hand. For a time, things went well in all five areas, but owing to a strategic blunder, the airfield at Malame in the west was allowed to fall into enemy hands, allowing wave after wave of planes to land, thus spelling the end of the first phase of the resistance. On the 23rd of May, the rest of the Malame position had to be given up and its defenders fell back on Hania. On the 26th of May, the Allied line west of Hania was broken. Suda Bay became indefensible and the troops from these two positions, with the remainder of the Malame garrison, took the long and hazardous road, harried and strafed by Stukas, through the inhospitable mountains to Svakia, from where many of them were evacuated by sea on the nights of the 28th to the 31st of May. Further east, the airborne attacks on the Heraklion and Rethymnon positions were at first repulsed. Heraklion was successfully defended until the night of the 29th of May, when the garrison was evacuated by sea. Orders for the Rethymnon garrison to fight its way southward for evacuation did not arrive and it was overwhelmed on the 31st of May. Of the total Commonwealth land force of 32,000 men, 18,000 were evacuated, 12,000 were taken prisoner and 2,000 were killed. The site of Suda Bay War Cemetery was chosen after the war and graves were moved there by the 21st and 22nd Australian War Graves Units from the four burial grounds that had been established by the German occupying forces at Hania, Heraklion, Rethymnon and Galata, and from isolated sites and civilian cemeteries. There are now 1,500 Commonwealth servicemen of the Second World War buried or commemorated in the cemetery. 776 of the burials are unidentified, but special memories commemorate a number of casualties believed to be buried among them. Why did you come to Crete, so many of you, from so far away and so young? For king and country, England, the empire? To defeat Hitler and the Nazis, smash fascism, defend democracy? Or an adventure with your mates, to get out of New Zealand or Oz, see the world, have a crack at Jerry? 2,000 men dead, 2,000 reasons why or not. Were you prepared to fight and if necessary die as just one small part in an overall strategy? So ill-equipped, badly provisioned and inadequately trained. 
Were you prepared to fight and die because of someone else's tactical mistakes? So many of you, 2,000 dead, 12,000 taken prisoner, 1,500 buried here, half of you nameless, without identity, known to God. From so far away, Australia, New Zealand, Britain, Canada, Cyprus. Christians, Jews, atheists, fighting together with Cretans, resisting the invasion of their homeland. So young, 21, 22, 23. burned into the stone with bitter tears. We say that time heals, that there's no use opening old wounds, that we should let bygones be bygones. Now that many of those who did return are gone, why should we remember you, whose lives were cut off with all your hopes and aspirations? Why not just let you stay as rows of tombstones, beautifully tended in your green lawn by the blue sea, with the view before you stretching out into eternity? If we, the living, don't estimate the meaning of this sacrifice, and because of our ignorance let it happen again, then all of it would have been meaningless and in vain. We have to see you as people and listen to your voices, written down in letters, journals, and first-hand accounts, and to imagine the voices of those who left no traces of themselves behind, except pain in the hearts of those they love. And this is why so many have returned over the years, and after them their children and relatives, so that the memory stays green and isn't allowed just to fade away. So these are your lost voices. Let us home. We've had some pretty rum tucker. One day we gets invited into this village house, sat down and this stuff ladled onto our plates. Couldn't for the life of me think what it was, but they're all saying eat, eat, so I'd no option. Some kind of bitter grass that puckered up your lips and something chewy swimming in oil. And it wasn't till I'd taken a couple of mouthfuls that Bill whispered snails. And I was out of there like greased lightning, the old fellow laughing till tears came to his eyes. When I caught a glance of myself in the mirror, I saw myself so thin, with sunken cheeks and eye sockets, my skin like parchment stretched over my high cheekbones. I really looked Mongolian. Every rib showed and my arms and legs were like matchsticks. When I weighed myself, I found that instead of my normal 11 stones, I was just seven. You don't know what misery is like till you find yourself wearing wrong-sized boots on a route march. The further you go on, the worse it gets. And we're talking about dirt roads, zigzagging up and all the time it's getting colder and colder especially when the sun goes down. And when at last you take your boots off for a rest and see the state your bloody feet are in. Dear Violet, complete shambles at Malamé. Seems someone had blundered. 
don't want to point the finger of blame, but after all this is over, where heads will roll, and they won't be British. Kiwi Johnny, right off his rocker, decided to pull out from, from the hill, giving the Bosch just the chance they wanted. Sickening, really sickening, to see all those gallant men betrayed after all they'd been through. If it was just our lot, things would have been all right. So, what are you, a Jew, doing here in Crete, they ask me. And I ask them back, what are you, an Australian, doing here, when you could have stayed peacefully at home? Might it be that we have something in common? They, the Cretans, say that when God finished making the world, he tipped all the bits left over in his sack onto Crete. And that's what you see at night after a long day's marching. Stones, thousands of them, swimming in front of your eyes. One minute they were there alongside me, me mates, laughing and joking, and the next they gone, blown away, the whole battalion, just senseless. I'll never forget that night. We'd stopped for the night at a pass high in the mountains, and the Maoris had lit a fire and managed to cook some tucker and brew up some tea. And as we lay there under the stars, thousands of them, they started to sing their songs, and it was so bloody lovely. We were all mates together. But when I woke up the next morning, I found they'd stolen my boots and pissed off. I had to walk to Svakia in my socks. Can't tell you how much I, all of us, just want to get back home and to feel that I am a human being again and not some kind of animal being hunted down. Just to see me mum and me best girl. And the only thing that keeps me going is to imagine how we'll manage. I often find myself dreaming of that. How to make things better for you and me and the world a better place. They're still marching on.